Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 35 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna create a little bit of code to prevent a small issue that we have now that our Ajax dynamic pagination is pretty much working, it's pretty much complete. So if we take a look at our front end, the current status of our front end, in the previous lesson, we created these nice um, transition of the page. So if we scroll down and we reach the point where we touch the new post that we just loaded, the URL dynamically update itself and we have a dynamic pagination. So we know we are on page two. If we keep scrolling, we know we are on page three. So if the user, for example, goes inside a video post title or whatever post and then goes back, actually is going back on the same position that he left and it's actually page three. But here we have a small problem. So if the user access to page three, he cannot physically right now go back and load on top of these really loaded posts, the previous post. So he cannot load page two, he cannot load page one. The only solution is for him to click the home button and go back directly at the beginning of our block loop. But this is not a really good user flow, a really good user experience. We shouldn't prevent the user to check just the previous two articles, just the previous page. So we have to create a dynamic button here that is pretty much like this one, but works in reverse. So it's instead of loading more, it needs to load previous posts. So let's create this. First of all, let's access our code editor. And inside the index.php where we're printing our, our posts, we have to uh, pretty much copy this section, this container section. We're gonna use the same structure, the same CSS and JavaScript code to handle all these situations. So let's copy these and let's put it just right before the container, the sunset post container, just right here. But we have to print this container with this new button only if we are not on page one. So if we are actually inside the pagination. To check if we are inside the pagination, we already know that code and we already know that function for WordPress. So let's open our PHP tags and let's write if, open the brackets, is underscore paged, open and close the brackets and no parameter needs to be passed. And this, as I explained in the previous lesson, I think this his page is a function of WordPress that detects the current page that the user is viewing if is a paginated page. So it's not page one, but it's page two or more. And here, of course, we have to open and close the PHP tags and stop the end if. Now let's change these. Instead of load more, we can write load previous. And here we can pretty much leave everything like that because also here we need to know this function, if you remember, it's grabbing the current pagination, the current data page, with what page we're looking at. So if we have to load a previous post of a previous page, we still need to know the data page, the actual page we are. We still need the data URL, but now we need one more parameter to dynamically update the JavaScript function, to dynamically change the outcome of the JavaScript function. So let's create another data attribute called data prev that is going to be equal to one. Let's save it. Let's just check if it's actually working. So let's go back here. Let's go back in our first page. We shouldn't see the, um, the button and actually we're not seeing it. If we load, we load more. Of course, it's loading again. Let's see, nothing is happening on the first section, but here we keep going and we're loading all the sections that we need. Now we are on page three. The top part is not interfering at all. So now let's reload the actual page three. And there you go. Now we have the load 
previous and of course it's kind of clunky and it's not really working properly so the thing that we should do we should actually create another type of class to handle that separation so let's create a container load previous so we know that is this container that it's handling the previous loading let's access our uh, SAS file, the sunset.scss. Let's scroll down to the Ajax loading section and let's create this new class just right at the top, a load preview. And let's give it just a margin top of 80 pixels. And because in this situation right now we have a huge margin here because we have both margin top, it's I think it's 80 pixels or something like that. So we have both the container and the page, the actual post. To prevent this, I can apply a negative margin bottom to this element to temporarily remove this extra top padding that we are having here. So let's do that just by writing margin bottom minus 40 pixels. So we're gonna remove those 40 pixels. And here, I think margin top is just put it 40 pixels. We don't need 80 pixels this big so let's reload this page and now it's way better another solution that you could have adapted but it's not really recommended is to insert this entire section directly inside the sunset posts container to uh, use all the pre-existing padding and margin we are not doing this we are keeping this completely outside the post container because as i said at the beginning of this small uh, section about ajax loading we need this container to be empty to not have extra elements inside other than the template parts, the content itself, because we are loading all our posts in here. And also on top, it needs to be empty because all the new posts or the previous posts that we're gonna load are gonna be loaded, are gonna be attached here at the beginning of our post. So let's keep going and let's do this. Now, of course, if we click this button, we're gonna have the same animation, but we're gonna have the <laughs> next post attached at the bottom and we this button is acting exactly like this other button so it's it's kind of weird <laughs> like we have the animation but we're loading more pages and we're not going back so we have to dynamically change the javascript function to handle these different behavior and that's where the data prev uh, attribute it comes useful because we already have both jQuery and uh, Ajax, the, the PHP file that handles the Ajax. So I don't really want to rewrite this entire section again if the only thing that I have to change is loading previous post instead of next post. So instead of rewriting another entire section, another entire jQuery function to handle a different type of loading, we can simply pass a dynamic variable to change the outcome of our function. And this dynamic variable is the data attribute that we created. So here we can specify bar prev that it's gonna be equal to that data prev. And let's save, before doing that, let's check one thing. If we access again here, we reload and we click, we open our console here in the inspector and we click. This button doesn't have a data prev attribute, so it shouldn't trigger any error, even if we're looking for something that doesn't exist. As far as we don't give the existence of this variable for granted, so after storing whatever information we have here, we have to check if this variable has something, otherwise we cannot just use it, we risk to trigger an error. And to do that, we can simply use a JavaScript default function that is called type off. So let's do a little bit of checking with a conditional function, if, open brackets, type off, and here we write our variable that in our case is prev, it's identical to undefined and this is a default value that a JavaScript variable that is not defined is gonna return. So if we have an undefined alert on this one, we're gonna give this variable prev a value of zero. 
And that's it. So now we are pretty safe. Even if our button doesn't have this data prev attribute, we are checking if this variable is undefined or it's empty. We are assigning this prev equal zero. And we can check in this way in our PHP if the previous variable, the prev variable, is equal to one or equal to zero. And if it's equal to one, we can, it means that we have to load the previous post and not the next one. So we can just simply pass this variable by writing prev column prev. So let's keep everything consistent. Now we have to go inside our ajax.php file, inside our ink folder, ajax.php file, and let's grab this dollar prev variable and let's go equal dollar underscore post and let's grab this prev. And just to check what, what kind of variable we're having, just let's just echo this dollar prev variable. So we're gonna see if our script is actually working. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. If we load previews, we're gonna have here an echo of one. That means that the data prev was defined and we define it as one. Instead, if we click here that doesn't have a data preview and we see the result is zero. Of course, now you see 10 because we were having one before, but if we load right now, we are having zero. It means that the data prep is not defined. And that confirms the fact that our script works and we can use these dollar prep variable to check what we have to do. Now, what we have to do to load the previous container, the previous elements of our post, we have to just simply uh, invert this paged variable, instead of adding one, we have to remove one. So we're gonna load the previous page. And to do that, we can check simply with if our dollar prev variable is equal or identical to one, it means that we wanna load the previous post, we're gonna change this variable page to be equal to pretty much this one, but instead of plus one, just minus one. So we're going to load the previous posts and this post page is not equal to one. We have to prevent a possible issue. We're going to do this in JavaScript as well. We're going to remove the button if we are on page one, but uh, always do a double check. If you can do also a security check in PHP, always do it, it's better. So here we're checking if our uh, page value, if the current page that we're seeing is not page one, so we're not on the first page, we can do this. Otherwise, if we are on the first page, it means we cannot load any more previous posts because they don't exist. We are on the first page. So we avoid to do this and we prevent to trigger an error by loading or passing zero to the WP query as a paged value. And this is a good solution. Let's go back in the sunset.js. And here we still need to use the previous variable because now at the end of our function, when we have the success return of Ajax, we are appending here our response to the sunset post container. But if the data prev is defined as one, it means that we want to load previous posts. So we should prepend stuff here. And to do that, we can easily check it. So let's do if another conditional inspection. So if prev is equal to one, we can do something otherwise else we can do something else. And of course, if it's not equal to one, we want to append our response at the bottom. So it means that zero and it means we're loading new posts. Instead, if it's equal to one, it means we are loading previous posts. In, in here, instead of using the append function of jQuery, we can use the prepend function of jQuery that it's gonna dynamically apply whatever information, whatever HTML we have in our response here inside the sunset post container, but at the beginning before every other element, not at the bottom. Sounds good. Let's check it out and let's try if we destroy our code. So let's refresh. We are on page five now, so we should load previous post. 
load previews and boom, look at that. And if we scroll, our pagination works as well. We're on page four. So now here we check, we should check this button before clicking again. Here we're still on page five because we didn't upload, we didn't update properly our data pagination. I mean, we did it here because now we are on page five and this is page five, but we should do it on this post. So let's fix also this JavaScript issue. Here we have to simply edit the new page value because if the previous page is not undefined, so we are still loading a previous post, the new page shouldn't be an addition like a page more, but the new page should be a negative page. Does make sense? And also we should update only this button that we clicked and not the other buttons. And the function already does that because we are using the that variable that it's referring to only to the button that we actually clicked. So we will not replace or update the page data attribute of the load more button, but we will do it only for the load previous button and vice versa. So here we can use the same conditional function that we uh, used at the end here, but we can change the new page dynamically. So right now new page is equal to page plus one and we can keep it like that by default. So we will always have the value, but let's insert this update of the button right after our conditional check. So in the conditional check here in the if previous is equal one, we have the time to update our new page variable. And if the previous is equal one, it means we are pre-pending, pre means we are loading a previous page, we have to update the new page variable to be equal to page minus one. If you notice here, I'm not redeclaring var to specify that this is a JavaScript variable because I already did it at the beginning. If, if you do something, if you declare a variable at the beginning of your script, then you can reuse that variable to update it dynamically without redeclaring the uh, attribute var. And this is really helpful. So now our script should work and it shouldn't affect the second button. So let's refresh here. We're on page four. If we check our source code here, load previous has a data page of four. So if we're loading, we will load page three. Here, this data attribute has as well a data page of four. So if we click here, load previous, it's gonna load the previous two posts. We are our dynamic URL update works. We are on page three. If we check this load previews here, this data page is still four because as I told you, this dynamic value, this data attribute value, they don't get updated in the inspector dynamically, but it's actually getting properly updated because if we click again, load previews, we're gonna load these previous posts. If we scroll, it's page two. So we know that this script is loading actually page two. If we click again, load previews, it's loading page one, and now we are on page one. So now we have to fix another small issue, and then I promise we're done with this Ajax pagination that it's been really long. But if we keep scrolling, of course, we go back on page four. If we click load more just to check, we're gonna load page five. And here we have this option. So if we load page five, nothing's happening. And if we go back here and we load previous, we're on page one, something weird happens. We are loading page two again. If we load again, we're loading page minus one here. We have this weird URL page minus one. So this is an issue of uh, this loading pagination. We have to detect if we are on page one to remove the previous loading button and to remove the dynamic pagination to load previous posts because they don't exist. And we have to do something as well for the bottom. If we don't have any more posts, we should remove the load more button and put another message. Maybe like you reached the end of the line or this was my last post, um, take it easy or something like that. So let's do that. Let's access again our ajax.php and here we have to return something before returning, like before starting the while. So here, first the easy part. The easy part is when we load more posts. So we load 
older post and we're going down from top to bottom. Here we have already the function that checks if we actually have posts and instead of finishing just simply with and if, we can put a simple else. So we have the ability to echo something else and here we can echo maybe a zero. So let's save it. Let's go back in the sunset.js. Here we have our success resolve function where we're collecting the response. By default, the response is the collection of the new post that we're loading, but we can check if our response is equal to zero. So if another conditional response is identical to zero, it means that we have no more posts to load. So we can simply use this code, sunset posts container, and let's append a little bit of HTML here. We can append an H3 value and let's write something like, you reach the end of the line. And maybe let's write also a paragraph to be more serious at the end. No more posts to load. Bam. How's the sound? Sounds pretty good, right? And here, of course, other than putting the if condition, we can we have to wrap these other part of the function as an else, as an alternative. So it means that if the response is not equal to zero, it means that we have posts to load. Let's access here, let's put it here, and let's indent, and that's perfect. So let's remove this stuff. Let's remove this extra space. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's check. Let's refresh just the first page. And let's load all the posts. So let's go down. Page true. Luckily, we have just five pages. We have page three, page four, page five. Load more. Boom, you reach the end of the line, no more posts to load. So we have to fix a, a little bit of things. So first we have to completely remove the button. This is so amazing, but it's better to remove it. And this, I want this to be central line. So let's do this by just wrapping this into a div. Use class text center. And then let's close this div. And here inside this if statement as well, instead of doing what we're doing this, like removing the loading class and sliding down the text, I want to use that and completely slide up everything to 320 milliseconds. So we are completely hiding the loading more button completely. So it's gonna disappear and the user cannot click anymore on that. Let's save it, let's go back again. Let's refresh directly page five, so we will pretend to load more posts. Load posts, nothing. You reached the end of the line. No more posts to load. Sounds great. Now we have to do something similar to the load previous, but instead of putting a message, we just have to remove this button when we are on page one in order to avoid the user to click again. So. Let's do that by detecting what kind of page we have right now. So if we load, for example, page two, we're gonna see these two posts. And if we inspect the element of our button, we're gonna know that the data, data page is two. So if we are loading the previous button, we are gonna have a return or a new page value equal to one. And if the new page value is equal to one, I wanna hide this button to avoid problems with my JavaScript code, to avoid to load stuff that don't exist and have a minus one value in my Ajax navigation. So let's do that by detecting as well the results of this new page. So. Here we have to write another statement, if, another conditional statement, if new page, the variable new page, is identical to one, it means we are on page one, we have to do the same that we did here. We have to completely remove the button and we can use the same code because we clicked on the previous button. So this slide up is gonna affect only the previous button, not the um, load more button, so let's hide completely the button and here let's put the else otherwise we will execute our usual 
stuff by updating the data page value and removing this pin and revealing again the button. I'm gonna leave the reveal posts outside because even if we are on page one, we have to load, uh, we have to show and reveal the latest post that we loaded, so the first two posts in my case. But the only thing that I, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna reactivate the button to load previous posts again. So let's check again. Let's go back here. Let's refresh on page two. So now if we click, should load and then hide this button completely. That's perfect. That sounds amazing. We are on page one. If we refresh the page, of course, WordPress automatically is gonna detect that page one doesn't exist and it's gonna load the first on page. It's not really an issue, but if you want, you could extend a little bit the PHP functionality to avoid to return a page one container to our uh, newly loaded post. So let's do it again. Let's load here. We are on page two, let's refresh and we are actually on page two, if we click load previews, we're gonna load the first two posts. The loading disappeared, but here if we scroll, we are on page one. And it's not an issue. As I said, at WordPress, it's pretty smart, it recognizes that page one is actually no pagination at all, so we're pretty good to go. And of course our load more works because we created all this different JavaScript and Ajax detection of variable, dynamic variable that we're passing to detect what situation we're having. And let's click until the end to check if our uh, bottom reached option <laughs> it has been reached. So let's load more, you reached the end of the line, no more posts, that's so good. So this lesson finally wraps entirely the uh, Ajax section that we just created for our amazing sunset theme. Of course, there's gonna be more stuff that we have to add to this Ajax navigation, especially uh, if we wanna maintain this method to load posts inside categories or tags or author pages or archive even. For example, if a user use, uses the search functionalities, we want to give him the ability to have the same list and load more posts related to the search. We have to extend the WP query to accept other values like category values or tag values or a search result value. And we're gonna take care of this stuff in future lessons, but we are on a pretty good position, a pretty good point because our JavaScript function, as you notice, I didn't rewrite it. I just extended the functionality of this, this function. I just extended a couple of options and I made this function scalable and adaptable to different situation. And this way of coding, like not rewriting stuff, not recoding or reusing the same function and redeclaring it in a different way just to change a simple value, it's really smart because it prevents us to have the same code written multiple times. It's super easy to update. We can, if we have to do an update, we can do it once and it's gonna reflect everywhere. It's, it's great. It's just a really great way of working and preventing to repeat the same code multiple times. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check my support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.